In this tutorial, we are going to put together a lot of the fundamentals covered in the previous tutorials to make a version of the game Pong. We'll use the canvas, image sprites, if statements, and also introduce collision detection. So let's get started. From the Drake App Camp website, click on App Camp Part 2, and scroll down to the Pong section and download the files boing.wave and paddle.png to your desktop like I have already here. Then go on and continue to the App Inventor homepage. Click the Create button, and we'll go ahead and create a new project. Call this Pong. Okay, great. From this screen, we're going to first change the title of that screen to be Pong. I'm also going to change the background color to be black as well. So then from here, we're going to click on the Drawing and Animation drawer and drag out a canvas. Let's rename this to be the Pong Playing Canvas. And set its width to be Fill Parent. And its height will make that about 350 pixels. That'll work pretty well for us. Great. The next thing we're going to do is drag out a ball. So there's a couple of interesting things, interesting properties that are, are um, part of a ball. So the first is a heading, and the heading is basically a number between 0 and 360, which gives the direction the ball is going to travel. Um, so 90 degrees is straight up, 0 degrees is to the right, 180 degrees is to the left, and 270 is down, go heading down um, south. So the other interesting thing here is an interval. An interval is the number of milliseconds that the ball is going to be updated. In this case, 100 milliseconds is a tenth of a second. And that's a pretty good interval for our, our purposes here. The other interesting property here is the speed. And that indicates how many pixels the ball is going to travel every interval. And so we'll be adjusting the speed variable quite a bit um, during our game of Pong. Uh, I'm going to rename that ball to be our Pong ball. I also want to change its color to be red. And we can change its radius to be, uh, say, 15. So a nice ball here. Great. Um, I'm also going to drag on an image sprite and rename this to be our paddle. So the paddle is going to have the same sort of properties as the ball does. I can also change this to be a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and do so here, uploading those files we've had on our desktop. While we're at it, let's go ahead and also upload that boing.wave file. Okay, great. Change that picture of the paddle to be paddle.png, and there we go. The next thing I want to do is go back to the layout drawer here and drag on a horizontal arrangement down here. Um, again, change its width to be fill parent. That'll make it easier to put things in there. Then go to the user interface drawer. We're going to drag out a button. Rename this to be the start button. And change its text to be start. We're also going to drag out a couple of the, uh, labels here. Um, the first label, we'll rename that to be the score label. We can't see it initially. That's because its text is black. And so let's change that text color to be white. Scroll down to get white. And change its text to be score followed by a, a colon. And let's also change its size to be, say, 24. Another label goes next to that guy. Call this the score value. And we'll do, kind of do the same sort of thing. Change the text color to be white. The font size to be 24, um, and the text, in this case, let's just make the text zero. So notice I've got two separate labels here. This is going to allow me to easily update the score number without having to deal with the, the string or the, the name score followed by that variable, followed by that number. One more label here, drag out one last label. We'll call this the game over label. Change its font size to 24. Change its text to be game over. Let's make that font color 
red. Good. One last thing. Let's get a sound and drag that out. This will be the boing sound. And change its source to be boing.wave. All right. That's the look and the feel for our, our Pong game. Let's go ahead at this point in time and connect to the phone. So the app looks something like this to begin with. Let's now click over to the blocks editor. The first thing to do is to make sure that we can move the paddle when the user touches the paddle and drags it around. So let's click on the paddle here and find the paddle dot dragged block right here. Great. Notice there are several different arguments that we could choose from. I'm going to click on paddle again and I'm going to scroll down here and find the move to block. So when the paddle is dragged, I want to move the paddle's position, the x and y position, to be one of these arguments. So let's hover over the current x and get that value. And you could also click hover over the current y and set the y position to be the current y. This, however, would allow the user to click on the paddle and move it wherever they want to. In this case, I want to keep the paddle at the very bottom of the screen. So that's a small mistake. Let's get rid of that guy. Instead, I'm going to change that paddle's Y position to always be 315. So now, when I move the paddle, right, it always going to stay at the bottom of the screen, like so. Great. The next thing I want to do is allow the user to press the start button, which is going to put that ball into motion. So let's click on that start button and get the event handler for when the start button is clicked. The first thing I'm going to do is change the ball's speed and its heading. So scroll down here to set the pong ball speed to a certain value. For now, I'm going to set that to be equal to 20. So put that in like that. Great. I also want to set its heading. Remember that the heading is a number between 0 and 360. Right? If it's going to 0, it's going to go into the, right to the right. If it's going 90, it'll be going up. If it's going to the left, 270, you get the idea. So to make things kind of interesting, I'm going to click on this math drawer here and pull out a random number. And let's make that a random number between 45 and 135. So when the button is pressed, the ball should be traveling at a speed of 20 in a general direction you know, that's kind of up some random number between 45 degrees and 135 degrees. So let's take a look and see if it works. Sure enough, it does. But there's a problem here because we haven't told the app what to do when the ball hits an edge. So that's the next step. Click on the Pong ball and find the event handler when Pong ball edge reached. So this is going to be an event handler whenever the ball hits an edge. Click on the pong ball again and drag out the block to call pongball.bounce. So notice now the pong ball is going to bounce whenever it hits a particular edge. The nice thing about this edge reach block is that it gives you an argument for the edge the pong ball hits. So now when the pong ball hits an edge, it'll bounce off of it. So let's take a look. Great. We still can't quite hit the ball with the paddle, however. So let's work on that next. Click on the paddle and find the when paddle dot collided with block. This is going to detect when the paddle, or the ball hits the paddle. So next we want to bounce the ball off the paddle. So again, click on the, ball, the pong ball and find that pongball.bounce block. In this case, we need to put in the edge that the pong ball is going to bounce off of. And there's a, a code for the number of the edges on the App Inventor. And the bottom edge has got the negative one designation. The top edge is positive one. The left is um, positive three. The right is negative three. Um, and so, in this case, we want the ball to bounce off the paddle, edge negative one. So that's how that's going to work. So let's take a look and make sure that 
our app actually works like we expect it to now. So notice it's bouncing off the walls, that's great. It also will hit the paddle and bounce off as well. Great, so this is a good stopping spot for the first Pong tutorial. Continue on with Pong part two to talk about how we can get the score to increment and the game over to respond like we want it to.